Our topic for today is the autonomic nervous system drugs. The autonomic nervous system regulates the body's involuntary functions. The types of drugs used to treat disorders of the autonomic nervous system include the cholinergic drugs, anticholinergic drugs, adrenergic drugs, and adrenergic blocking agents. So cholinergic drugs promote the action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. These drugs are also called parasympathomimetic drugs because they produce effects that imitate the parasympathetic nerve stimulation. So there are two major classes of cholinergic drugs. First is the cholinergic agonist, which mimic the action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, and the anticholinesterase drugs, which work by inhibiting the destruction of the acetylcholine at cholinergic receptor sites. So how cholinergic drug agonists work? So when a neuron in the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine is released. And acetylcholine causes the synapse and interacts with the receptors in adjacent neuron. So cholinergic agonist drugs work by stimulating cholinergic receptors mimicking the action of the acetylcholine. So by directly stimulating cholinergic receptors, cholinergic agonists mimic the action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So they include drugs such as acetylcholine, botanical, carbocol, and pelocarpine. Now for the pharmacokinetics, so cholinergic agonists are usually administered topically with eye drops orally or by subcutaneous injection. All cholinergic agonists are metabolized by cholinesterase at the muscarinic and nicotinic receptor sites, in the plasma, and in the liver. These drugs are excreted by the kidneys. Food decreases their absorption, so less than 20% of a cholinergic agonist is protein-bound. All cholinergic agonists are metabolized. Now, for the pharmacodynamics, cholinergic agonists work by mimicking the action of acetylcholine. So, they stimulate the muscle and produce salivation, bradycardia or slow heart rate, dilation of blood vessels, constriction of the pulmonary bronchioles, increased activity of the GI tract, increased tone and contraction of the muscles of the bladder and constriction of the pupils. Now for the pharmacotherapeutics, cholinergic agonists are used to treat atonic weak bladder conditions and postoperative and postpartum urine retention. They treat GI disorders such as postoperative abdominal distension and GI atony. It reduces eye pressure in patients with glaucoma and during eye surgery. And it treats salivary gland hypofunction caused by radiation therapy and surgeon syndrome. Now for the drug interactions, other cholinergic drugs, particularly anticholinesterase drugs such as hydroponium and pyridostigmine, boost the effects of cholinergic agonists and increase the risk of toxicity. Anticholinergic drugs such as atropine and scopolamine reduce the effects of cholinergic drugs. And quinidine reduces the effectiveness of cholinergic agonists. Now for the adverse reaction, because they bind with receptors in the parasympathetic nervous system, Cholinergic actions can produce adverse effects such as nausea and vomiting, cramps and diarrhea, blurred vision, decreased heart rate and low blood pressure, shortness of breath, urinary frequency, 
and increase salivation and sweating. Now for the categories of cholinergic drugs. So there are six categories of cholinergic drugs. So these categories along with representative agents are shown in this table. So the muscarinic agonists represented by botanicals selectively mimic the effects of acetylcholine at muscarinic receptors. The muscarinic antagonists represented by atropine selectively block the effects of acetylcholine and other muscarinic agonists at muscarinic receptors. Now for the cholinergic drugs and their receptors. So this table is the key to understand the cholinergic drugs. So it lists the three major subtypes of cholinergic receptors. Muscarinic, nicotinic N, and nicotinic M. And indicates for each receptor type, the location, the responses to activation, drugs that produce activation, and the drugs that prevent activation or the antagonists. Now first, the muscarinic agonists. So cholinergic receptors are located on the surface of cells that get activated when they bind a type of neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. So muscarinic agonists bind to muscarinic receptors and thereby cause receptor activation. Because nearly all muscarinic receptors are associated with parasympathetic nervous system, Responses to muscarinic agonists closely resemble those produced by stimulation of parasympathetic nerves. So accordingly, muscarinic agonists are also known as parasympathomimetic agents. And so, for the prototype drugs, for the muscarinic agonists, the generic is botanical with the trade name Uricoline and Duvoid. And for the muscarinic antagonist, it is atropine with trade name atropine. Now for the preparation, dosage, and administration of muscarinic agonist. So first, your botanical, it is a direct-acting muscarinic agonist. So it is available in tablets, usually given 3 to 4 times a day. So it should be given 1 hour before meals or 2 hours after to prevent nausea and vomiting. Another muscarinic agonist is your severmilin. So it is a derivative of acetylcholine. So the drug is indicated for dry mouth or serostomia. It is available in capsules. And another muscarinic agonist is your pelocarpine. It is either ophthalmic or given in systemic circulation. So it is available in solution, or in gel, or in tablet. So if it is given ophthalmic, so we apply pressure to the lacrimal area for 1 to 2 minutes post-administration. And if we give tablet to our patient, for surgeon syndrome, a uh, nursing lecture would be to avoid administration with high fat meals due to the decreased rate of absorption. And now for the nursing process in administration of the cholinergic drug, so first would be the assessment. So we assess for disorders in which cholinergic agonists are used, such as myasthenia gravis. Then we assess for urine retention and blood retention to determine the patient's fluid intake and time and amount of last urination. Then we assess for possible paralytic ileus or paralysis of the small intestine by checking for bowel sounds and abdominal distension. And we assess for disorders that may be aggravated by cholinergic agonies such as your Alzheimer's disease. Now for the key nursing diagnosis for patients taking in cholinergic agonies is the impaired gas exchange related to increased secretions 
bronchospasm or respiratory paralysis. It could be an effective airway clearance related to increased respiratory secretions. And lastly, impaired urinary elimination related to cholinergic drug action. Now for the planning outcome goals, so the patient will maintain effective oxygenation of tissues. So the patient will regain usual patterns of urinary and bowel elimination and therapeutic effects of cholinergic drugs will be observed and the patient will demonstrate correct drug administration. Now for the implementation, we administer cholinergic drugs as prescribed. So be aware that some drugs such as botanical should be given before meals. And we monitor for effects of cholinergic drugs and report adverse reactions. And we evaluate. So the patient's underlying condition improves. The patients maintain a normal respiratory rate. The patient maintains a normal voiding pattern. The patient regains normal bowel patterns. And the patient and his family demonstrate an understanding of drug therapy. Now, let's go for the anticholinesterase drugs. So, anticholinesterase drugs block the action of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase at cholinergic receptor sites, preventing the breakdown of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So acetylcholinesterase are divided into two categories, reversible and irreversible. So here are the tabulation for the reversible anticholinesterase drugs and the irreversible anticholinesterase drugs. So how does anticholinesterase drug works? So after acetylcholine stimulates the cholinergic receptors, it is destroyed by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase and anticholinesterase drugs produce their effect by inhibiting acetylcholinesterase. So as a result, acetylcholine is not broken down and begins to accumulate. Therefore, the effect of acetylcholine are prolonged. So the pharmacotherapeutics of the acetylcholinesterase. So they are used to reduce eye pressure in patients with glaucoma and during eye surgery. It increases bladder tone. It improves the GI tone and peristalsis. It promotes muscle contraction in patients with myasthenia gravis. It is used to diagnose myasthenia gravis, such as your neostigmine and hydrophonium. It is used as an antidote to anticholinergic drugs, tricyclic antidepressants, belladonna alkaloids, and opioids. And it treats mild to moderate dementia and enhance cognition in Alzheimer's disease. Now for the acute toxicity, in cholinergic inhibitor, they are known as cholinergic crises. So, um, this is a life-threatening cholinergic crisis. So we have the mnemonic of sludge and the killer B, such as your salivation, lacrimation, your urination, diaphoresis or diarrhea, GI, cramping, emesis, bradycardia, bronchospasm, and your bronco. Yeah, so that is your mnemonic one, the sludge and the killer B. Now for the mnemonic two, we have your dumbbells. So they have the diaphoresis or diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bradycardia, bronchospasm, bronchorrhea, emesis, lacrimation, and 
your salivation. So overdose with cholinesterase inhibitors causes excessive muscarinic stimulation and respiratory depression. Now for the treatment, the treatment for the acute toxicity is your intravenous atropine because it can alleviate the muscarinic effects of cholinesterase inhibition. So, um, respiratory depression from cholinesterase inhibitors cannot be managed with drugs. So rather, treatment consists of mechanical ventilation, oxygen, and suctioning may be necessary if atropine fails to suppress bronchial secretions. Now, for the irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors, so we have here three, the neostigmine, peridostigmine, and your pesostigmine. So the irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors are highly toxic. So um, they are employed primarily as insecticides, but they can be used in highly individualized manner in myasthenia gravis for the neostigmine and your paradeostigmine. And it can be also used as a reversal of anticholinergic toxicity for your pisostigmine. Now, the irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors have only one indication. So, it is for the treatment of glaucoma. And for that indication, only one drug, your echo thiophate, is available. So the limited indication for irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors should be no surprise given their potential for harm. So the anticholinergic drugs, also called your cholinergic blockers, interrupt the parasympathetic nerve impulses in the CNS and the autonomic nervous system. So the major anticholinergic drugs are the belladonna alkaloids. You have your atropine, homatropine, your hepatropium, and your scopolamine. Then we have your synthetic derivatives of belladonna alkaloids, your glycopyrrolate, and your metscopolamine. And we have the tertiary amines, your benzotropine, desoclomine, and your oxybutynin. Now, the muscarinic antagonists, though also known as your anticholinergic drugs, um, atropine is the best known muscarinic antagonist and will serve as the prototype. So, it is a muscarinic antagonist and it is also um, known as the parasympatholytic drugs. So additional names for this are the anti-muscarinic drugs, muscarinic blocker, and the anticholinergic drugs. And so for the prototype is the atropine. So atropine acts by causing receptor muscarinic blockade. So its effects are opposite to those caused by your muscarinic activation. So the atropine exert their influence primarily on the heart so it increases heart rate and it also has an effect on the exocrine glands and the smooth muscles and in the eyes now for the actions of atropine it competitively antagonizes the actions of acetylcholine and other cholinergic agonists at the muscarinic receptors. So it is indicated for symptomatic bradycardia, preoperative reduction of secretions and blockage of cardiac vagal reflexes, adjunct treatment of peptic ulcer disease, and for the functional GI disorders. For the nursing considerations, if we give atropine, we monitor for the adverse reactions such as headache, tachycardia, restlessness, dizziness, blurred vision, dry mouth, urinary hesitancy, and constipation. 
Then we also monitor for the vital signs, cardiac rhythm, urine output, and vision for signs of impending toxicity. And we provide stool softeners or bulk laxatives as ordered for the constipation. And that's the end. Thank you for watching.